Before we start the video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all the support I received from you. And as always, all the information in my videos is rumors taken from the internet or the street. I'm not saying the information is fact. Don't pick your man's up. Just because people used to come through shooting us every day. Yeah, this block, uh, words can't even explain. Uh, can't even explain. Hey, man. Let's go. We're about to go far away on money. Yo, money, man. They in the building. 600 boy LA, man. LA Capone, man. Get in tune, man. Don't see hey. two boys, man. T. Why are you doing number nine, man? Number nine to shoot him. Hear me? You have to be willing to die or go to jail for a hundred years if that's the lane that you're stepping in. You have to understand that whether you're 15, 16, you got to think like a man. You know what I'm saying? Like, so don't be in it. Oh, you're not? Uh, Why does everybody say you're only 16 years old? They say what they want to say. How old, so are, how old are you? 300. <laughs> The story of Lil B. All my niggas on standby. Put them slapstick shorty. This shit don't stop. Hey, Moto. So far, I'm not a shit, I'm not a lackin' at Jairo City now. This is the story of Lil B from STL slash EBT. Lil B is really only from EBT, but since most people bundle STL and EBT, I will say STL slash EBT. Nowadays, there is actually a lot of tension between the gags, however, since this story takes place from 2007 to 2014, I will still say STL slash EBT. But keep in mind that STL and DBT are separate gangs. Most people have long known that Lil B was one of the most active shooters in the war with a block. However, it is mostly the last year where several police documents came out, that we who follow the scene understood the extent of it all. Police documents have been leaked on several sites such as Shirak Hits and Shirak LG. Lil B was one of the most dangerous members riding around in the Woodlawn community area with over five bodies to his name, and listed as the offender in over 30 police documents. Lil B is what many people think Wooski was, an outstanding member. One big reason why Lil B has not received this attention before, is because Lil B was not active on social media like Wooski and other members. He was not active on Twitter, IG or Facebook. He moved in silence, like a real killer. Shout Lil B. Grayson Shaw, also known as Lil B, was born on June 7, 1994 in Chicago, Illinois. What many do not know is that Lil B did not grow up in the areas around STL slash EBT but in the Calumet buildings on 65 in Maryland, 6217 to be exact. As many of you know, the 6217 Calumet building was a very famous building in Chicago's gang environment. It was located in TYMB Drow City Territory, which is very close to Parkway Gardens, and was actually the BD's stronghold and headquarters before the FBI raided the building, arrested most of the BD's leadership and later even tore down the whole building. I have actually talked about the Calumet building in previous videos, there are several famous members from both sides who grew up in that house. Among others, Melly, Wu and their father Jerome Golden, also known as Fido, grew up in the Calumet buildings, which by the way was also known as the Randolph Towers. Melly and Wu's father Fido was one of the leaders of the BDs in the building and is currently locked up for quadruple homicide. And yes, I know Fido isn't Melly's biological father but he was raised by him. Other famous members who also grew up in the Randolph Towers were Lil Reese, Varney and Lil Rob from Lamron, Frito from Front Street, Ide and Cide from 600 and Duwap from NLMB. There were really many today infamous members who grew up in the house, 
but many of them later moved to other areas in the city when the buildings were torn down. After the Calumet buildings, also known as Randolph Towers, were torn down, Lil B and his family moved to 64th and Ingleside which is basically the heart of Dro City. There is very little information about Lil B's family. He had a little brother that I will leave out of this. He had two sisters, Diara and Dominique. An interesting detail is that I think this Dominique is the same girl that King Von used to hang with back in 2012 to 2014. She was also close with Von's sister Kayla B and apparently, Dominique tried to set Von up in November 2012. Von even rapped about this in his song Big Homie with OMB Peasy when he rapped word around town, I heard a dude put a hit on me, no I like bad hoes, so the dude put a girl on me. Lil B's other sister, Tiara, was close with several TYMB members and even had several pictures with them on Facebook. This was no wonder when Lil B grew up in TYMB Dro City territory which I will soon tell more about. I know very little about Lil B's parents, his mother's name is Sharon. An ordinary mother who did everything to give the best to her children in a tough environment. The father I know nothing about, not even the name, and I have heard that his father was not involved in that life and that is why I do not choose to try to go deeper into it. Lilby had several cousins, mostly from the DYMB and Dro City area since he grew up there. For example, he was cousin with Courtney and Cortez who is rumored to have killed Tuca from STL slash EBT. He was also related to Ty from 065 Young Money, and Money Man and his brother Outlaw from TYMB, both of whom play a role in his story and in Lil B's life. He was also very close to Twin from TYMB who was basically family to him. Both grew up in the Calumet building, their mothers were close to each other and Twin and Lil B hung out a lot during that time. Lil B's cousin, Ty, who I just mentioned, is the person that DYMB is formed after. Ty, whose real name was Edric Walker, was killed in late May 2009, allegedly by Chicken, Taki and Face from EBT. All three were actually charged with the murder of Ty, however, Face was the only one ending up getting convicted of the murder. Chicken's sister even accused Face and Taki of snitching on her brother, however, I do not know if that's true. Face, whose real name is Roderick Brown, was sentenced to 26 years in prison and jail for the murder and will be released in 2035. Ducky, whose real name is Simtel Lanier, 
was really a menace in the streets. In 2010, Taki was charged with the murder of Ty. One year later, Taki was charged with three murders and armed robbery in Indiana. However, he remained in custody in Illinois awaiting trial for the Ty murder. In April 2016, he beat the murder charged for Ty and was turned over to Indiana on May 16, 2016 on pending charges. What's crazy about this story is that Taki somehow managed to beat the three murder charges but got sentenced to 25 years in jail for the armed robbery. He will be up for parole in 2027. This means he beat four murders in total, which makes me wonder how many murders he actually have committed and got away with. However, when it comes to Chicken and the Thai murder, some people claim that he was innocent. BG from EBT said in a live stream that Chicken got locked up for something he did not do, however, BG has been caught up in lies before and has an agenda, just like Jay Hood, so take it with a pinch of salt. Just as I mentioned earlier, Lil B grew up in DYMB Drow City territory and was even a member. Like many other gangs, DYMB has a rich and interesting history and is basically a branch of Drow City, just like Taekwon World is a branch of Jaro City. As many of you already know, DYMB stands for Thai, you are my brother, and is a set that houses 64th to 65th, cottage to Maryland and contains members that claim BD. GD and Stone. DYMB originated on 65th Maryland which is Dro City territory and back then, Dro City was an area that included several different cliques that were all once aligned to honor Dro from murder town, as Dro City is named after. Before Dro was shot dead, the area was also known as Ghost Town or Murder Town. Within Dro City, there were Snow Block, The Creek, Saw Block, BNC, D-Block and 065 Young Money, which would later become TYMB after the murder of Ty. Around this time, 2006 to 2008, they were also cordial with Trap City, and Dro City were Die 5 heavy because it has been rumored that the stones of Cranktown were responsible for the murder of Dro. However, just as I mentioned in the first part of Pocket Town, it has also been rumored that Lil Lay was behind the murder, which if the rumors is true is unknown. Dro City was once an alliance but after members started dying and new cliques started to emerge which resulted in smaller factions within Dro City starting to go their separate ways. This is also a big reason why Saw Block, Mac Creek, TYMB and Snow Block stand on their own two feet today.
O65 Young Money was very influenced by Lil Wayne, and it was also from him that they took the name, and after a while Young Money started to become a well-used name in Chicago, you can see the name in 051YM and 800YM for example. As many of you already know, WISE is an abbreviation for YM and that is why you can often see artists like Lil Durk and King Von dropping WISE in their music videos, which is a mockery of all young money blocks. However, Dirk and Von have not always been dropping WISE for TYMB. You do not have to go further than 78 years back in time when TYMB was cordial with THF 46, Lamron, O'Block, 600, Mabu, Rock Creek, Dog Pound, Chris World and 400 East Murder Drive, nowadays, every set on that list have turned on TYMB after various incidents that led to war or smaller beefs. The split with THF 46 basically started off as petty sneak dissing between THF and TYMB once the word got out that several TYMB members became cordial with 051YM who are enemies of THF. It actually made sense for TYMB to be cool with 051 since there's a lot of family ties between the two. Both were also close with Mabu, much thanks to Melly, Crumb, King Louie and then there was Kurt Mack who was an OG to both Young Monies. The sneak dissing between THF and TYMB later led to shootings and robbery. Lil B's cousin Money Man got robbed by THF 46 for example. There and then basically every DYMB member 46k. However, a few members from DHF like Twilla and Dre Money tried to resolve the situation, however, without success. D Rose however, who was known for sliding for both DYMB and THF 46, never picked a side in the beef and remained cool with both sets. DYMB's fallout with Lamron began after Pluto from Lamron was accidentally killed by Ivory from TYMB. However, even though most people think it was by mistake, many felt differently after hearing reports that Pluto was shot in the back while sitting in the front seat of a car. After the murder, both sides began to sneak diss each other. Lil Reese from Lamron went on Twitter and wrote, I'm DIY for both sides for Pluto, and recently, in the song Crossroads, Lil Dirk crapped, Pluto would still be alive if he ain't hang with strangers, which to me and many others makes it sound like it was not an accident. After the song was released, Courtney from TYMB went out on social media and said that Dirk is lucky to be alive and that his time is running out. Other TYMB members like Big Dre and Jitta have also mocked Lil Dirk several times. DYMB and Rock Creek had their fallout after Blue from TYMB was killed by Rock Creek due to a personal issue, TYMB retaliated and as of today, Rock Creek is basically cool with the whole Dro city except TYMB. 600 and O'Block basically fell out with DYMB due to their relations with DHF 46 and Lamron. A lot of O'Block and 600 members started to drop the Ys for TYMB. Then TYMB started to say FOD and that Obama is the real O. However, Lilby's cousin Money Man, actually did not support this split since he was very good friends with Prince Trey and had a lot of respect for him. Both Dog Pound and 400 Days Murder Drive turned on TYMB due to the Pluto incident. Mubba fell out with TYMB due to personal issues Crump had with them. Nothing major really but enough for them to not be cordial anymore. There is one more thing to tell when it comes to Dro City, it is not possible to mention that gang without mentioning Pac-Man, 
who together with King Louis both descended from Dro City and played a major role in the creation and definition of drill music. Many people think that Chief Keef started drill music, which is not true. He was more the artist who made it famous and influenced the whole USA but also several countries in Europe. However, Pac-Man and King Louis, who in my opinion get far too little attention and credit, are actually seen as the makers of drill. Pac-Man was not only an artist but he was also a well-known and respected member of BNC Snowblock which was a clique within Dro City, even its enemies respected him after his death. Pac-Man, 25, whose real name was Larry Johnson, was shot in his abdomen in an alley at 6400 South Ingleside Avenue in the Woodlawn neighborhood on the city's south side on June 21, 2010. He was sadly later pronounced dead at Northwestern Memorial Hospital. King Louis, who is also mentioned as one of the founders of drill music, is still alive today but was really close to losing his life in late December 2015 when he was shot in the head seven times, allegedly by Rome from THF 46. In an interview, King Louis said that the devil came and shot him, after that quote, THF 46 began to refer to Rome as the devil himself. Just like I mentioned earlier, Lil B was a member of TYMB and it is actually a lot that suggests that he actually put in work for them as well. Kells from TYMB taught Lil B how to move and do hits. Lil B had a name in the street already in the years 2007 to 2008. He was known for sliding on Jaro City and even had a shootout together with Scoot from Dro City with P5's brother Panky from Jaro City. He often slid with people like Courtney. Manny and Cortez from TYMB and was always around on the block and ready to pop out. However, Lilby would not remain a TYMB member for long, he would later switch and basically go over to the other side, to EBT, and I'll tell you why. Basically, Lilby was high and playing with guns and accidentally shot himself, however, after Lilby was treated at the hospital, the police came and picked him up for questioning because the police thought some enemies had come through and shot him. Some day after Lil B was questioned by the police, supposedly one of the members of DYMB was arrested, allegedly it was Manny. It was after this that rumors began to flourish that Lil B snitched on Manny by saying that Manny supplied him with a weapon. Lil B basically got violated because of this rumor and there are some rumors that he was beaten up, however, I do not know if that is true. However, the rumor that Lil B was snitching did not last long. It was pretty quickly disproved and his name was cleared, however, by that time, Lil B had already made up his mind and switched to EBT. This was a pretty natural transition as his sister and mother stayed on EBT all the time, and Lil B was not particularly involved in the war with EBT since his family stayed on that side and since EBT was in desperate need of shooters, and since they knew Lil B was really about that action, they accepted him. However, Lil B never switched nation, he was always a BD and remained BD, he even claimed GDK. For those of you who do not know, Lil B actually stands for Lil BD. STL slash EBT and Jaro did not care about that though, Jaro had several BDs such as Motor and Skinny, both EBT and STL also had BDs, Nation did not matter as long as you did not play both sides. Today, the Nation does not matter at all.
Be, that's that's what I see. Little B getting action like that. That's what really made me start like fucking with Shorty like. And that's when I started fucking with him. He stayed on Eagle Side right there on the block. 64 4. Posted right there on the block. You feel me? Can't miss it. You feel me? Right there, right across you from the park before they even put the field like I mean put they before they even put that crib right there on the other part, he said right across you from the park. I can walk out the park and go straight through the field and I'll be at his crib. You know what I'm saying? He was calling, yeah bitch, I'm BD boy. Motherfucker uh just have all type of stolen cars and shit, you know what I'm saying? Folks just have all type of stolen cars coming over with stolen cars and shit. On folks on the grave, that bitch used to be butter, bust. On folks on muscle. Whatever I used to be out there with us and shit too. See me going to them days. Those were them days right there on folks. And those were them days in Joe City where it was really bust. I got so much shit to say, shit to say about it. It's just so ridiculous, man. That hood used to be really loud, cracking, you feel me? So that shit happened. You know what I'm saying? And shit, it's been on ever since. As far as like, with the little B situation, you know he had popped himself on, on, on our block, you feel me? With a pipe, like a motherfucker, uh, pipe and shit, that one of the guys that gave him shit. You feel me? And, uh, yeah, he popped himself and shit. So shit had curve, man, they tried to say, you know, some shit had capping, man, some little nation beers, man, so much shit, so much so on, you know what I'm saying? The man, folks, folks went on the other side. He went on the other side, you feel me? Feel me not start turning up. You know what I'm saying? He learned it for bro. No, he knows like this real fast. You know what I'm saying? He learned like he been around like them niggas, like them shoes, like the niggas who get wild. So he he learned how, he learned how to do that shit. You feel me? I don't know how that shit go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we like that. I'm bro. For you to keep up with the timeline. We are right now in 2009, Lil B joined DBT in late 2009. As many of you already know, it is STL that has received the most attention from us who follow the drill scene, much because of FBG Duck and Wooski. However, EBT was really the side who put in the most work, had all the heavy hitters, the ones who were going hard at 065 Young Money, Zone 7 and Wick City and Lil B played a big role in the wars against Zone 7 and Wick City. Back before they even became one with STL, EBT was part of an alliance that people do not really know about. Just like the old SKD alliance, the Eberhardt blocks had one as well. This was back when alliances were more of a trend before there became so many different sets and subsets. E block was also part of this EBT alliance, it was pretty much all Eberhardt blocks. 62nd through 72nd. However, the alliance later died down due to unknown reasons and EBT became STL slash EBT. They still remain cool with E block though, much thanks to Soicy from EBT. Soicy was pretty much the biggest name out of them all before Lil B started to put in major work later on. He was allegedly robbing everybody, shooting multiple and had allegedly killed True from Zone 7. Solo from TYMB and was on was more hit on Trap City slash Zone 7 that we will come to later since it involves the main character in this story. Nowadays, So I See has moved out of Chicago and started a family and got a job on a construction site. He is no longer an active member of EBT. Around the years 2007 to 2009, STL was most into it with the young money blocks. Like I said earlier, EBT was also into it with the Young Money blocks but was mainly beefing with Wick City and Zone 7. Seaball, who was the head of STL and who also had good relations with EBT, brought STL and EBT closer, and eventually led to STL getting into it with the Wick which later led to the known war between STL slash EBT and Oblock. So I see, as I just mentioned, was also the brother of both Wee Wee and Chicken from EBT. Chicken who was allegedly one of the killers of Ty from 065 Young Money I have already told you about, and Wee Wee is currently locked up for killing Lil Chris from TYMB in September 2010, 
one year after Lil B joined DBT. Either Jamie or Bohan from TYMB, it's unclear which one, but one of them told on Wee Wee and Lil Don for killing Lil Chris, letting the investigators know that Wee Wee was likely retaliating for getting shot by Cortez from TYMB days before the murder of Lil Chris. Wee Wee is currently serving 38 years for the murder of 14-year-old Lil Chris and of two attempted murders of a 19-year-old and a 12-year-old in connection with the murder. He will be released in 2048. Just two months after the murder of Chris, so I see allegedly killed Solo from TYMB. As you can see, EBT was really pressuring TYMB heavy at this time and even Lil B slid on TYMB at this time, shooting up their block and whatnot. He was going at them because he was most likely felt some type of way after the false snitch rumors they put on him. However, just one month after the murder of Solo from TYMB, DYMB retaliated by killing Tuka from STL slash EBT, however, some claim that Wick City also were on the hit. The 12th of January 2011 was the date when Chicago's gang war on the South Side would change forever. Shondell Gregory Jr., known as Tuka, was standing on a bus stop on the 600 block of East 63rd Street. DYMB was out sliding in the area, looking to score. They drove past the bus stop where Tuka and two other people were waiting for a westbound 63rd Street bus. One of the two guys was 2-2 when the dark-colored van drove past. There are several rumors about who was on the hit. The brothers Cortez and Courtney have always been singled out as the killers, however, some even believe that Manny, Obama and Face from TYMB were also there. Then there are some people, like FBG Butta, who claim that OD was one of the killers. I believe it was both TYMB and OD on that hit. According to the witness report, the witness stated he observed two men having a conversation at the bus stop at 63rd and St. Lawrence. He then observed a male black wearing a black hood pull a silver handgun from his waistband and shoot the victim one time. The victim then fell to the ground and the offender stood over the victim and shot him three additional times with a long-barreled silver revolver. The offender then fled northbound on St. Lawrence and entered the back door of a powder blue Chevy Malibu. According to another witness, before Tuka was shot, the offender apparently asked if a bus was coming. The witness also stated that Tuka was a member of STL, and that they have been at war with the Young Money Boys from 67th and Cottage Grove, which is TYMB. The offender was also said to have a light brown complexion. All these statements fit right into OD from Wick City. He was known for having that long-barreled silver revolver, light brown complexion along with butter implying it was OD who did it. However, both the witness report and Louie from a block implied it was DYMB who did it. Which of them is true is unknown. OD could have been on the hit but gave his weapon to someone else in the car. It's really impossible to know. According to 600 Breezy, Tuka's body smoked after being shot. But I do not know if that is true. One can really compare this murder with the shootings in Sarajevo, but on a much smaller scale. Now y'all just only to saying shit about Von Q Tuga. Why would you say that? Tuga, oh, hey, Tuga, Tuga, killer died the same year on Tuga's birthday. That's a fact.
After the murder of Tuca, the war was really on with Wick City and just a few months later OD was killed in August 2011, who it was who shot is impossible to know because the truth is buried with lies and police documents, but much suggests it was both Mob and STL. Some names that have been mentioned are Beans, Scrap, Boss Trell, K.I., Butta and Main Main. However, a month before the murder of OD, Baldi was killed. It was 600 first loss in their history. There are two theories about who killed Baldi, and it is really impossible to know which one is true as it depends on the truth of some people's statement. Baldi, whose real name was Marcus London, was out on the block together with Buka and Breezy from 600 on the 6000 block of South Prairie Avenue. Two men pulled up and shot Baldi in the head, Breezy who was in front of Baldi, said that one bullet hit one of his dreadlocks, and Buka who tried to shoot back, accidentally shot himself in the ankle. Tragically, Baldi was later pronounced dead at the hospital. I will now go through both theories and you can choose which one you believe in. The first theory, and the one that has been around the longest, is that it was Mob that killed Baldi. When it comes to the mob theory, there has long been speculation that it was Domo and Cleon from Mob who killed Baldi, however, 600 Breezy, who was actually there when Baldi was murdered and certainly got a good look at the shooters, has long stated that Baldi's killer is dead, he claimed this already in 2014 and neither Domo nor Cleon is dead. Domo is currently serving life in prison for killing Pyro from 800 and Cleon is doing 16 years for aggravated discharge of a firearm. He will be up for parole in 2026. I think we can rule out both of them, however much depends on whether 600 Breezy is telling the truth. Others from Mob who have also been linked to the murder are Scrap, Bay Bay, Mano and Beans. In 2012, and Drill from 051 gave Mob a shout out for killing Baldi by tweeting, shout out Mob for making it Baldi world, and in 2014, Cap FCK12 tweeted, and you know for Baldi we will never stop, F Mob. Out of the names from Mob, Scrap and Mano makes the most sense to me honestly, Scrap has countless tweets mocking both Baldi and his other victim, Lil Steve, in the same tweets. He tweeted things like, you better duck your daka like Baldi tried to, and, the no mob made Baldi world. This is just two out of over a dozen tweets from Scrap mocking Baldi. In addition, both Mano and Scrap got a shout out two years later after the murder and in the tweet, it also said, he mob, they made Baldi world. In addition to all of this self snitching, 600 switch they focused to mob after this, they were going back and forth on internet all the time with them. Nut from Mob shot at and chased Boss Mu in December 2012, Cide shot Mano in 2013 which he bragged about a lot on Twitter in iconic conversations with Mano, and then Scrap was killed in the summer of 2014, allegedly by 600. However, some believe Scrap was killed by Shields and not 600 or Oblock.
When it comes to the STL theory, there is more vague evidence that points to STL slash EBT being behind the murder. Those from STL slash EBT who have been rumored to have been involved in the murder of Baldi are Main Main, Boss Trail or Lil B. Main Main from STL were pointed out by Odie's mother as her son's killer, and according to the police report from the murder of Odie's, the same gun that killed Odie was also used in the murder of Baldi a month earlier. However, many have been singled out as Odie's killers in police reports, which is why I say the truth will never come out since the truth is buried in lies. K.I., Bostrell, Main Main have all been singled out as Odie's killers and that's why Bostrell and Main Main have been linked to the murder of Baldi, even though most say Mob was behind it. However, since Mob was also involved in the murder of Odie, it is very difficult to know who held the particular gun that was also used in the murder of Baldi. Both Scrap and Beans have been rumored to be involved in the murder of OD, and that is why Ruga form mob wrapped, they do not even know who made the O. STL was also quite notorious for claiming murders they themselves were not behind, but rather murders for which EBT and mob were responsible. Another aspect one should take in is that weapons is being passed around like candy in the hood, people buy guns from others, take guns from others, or just give them away. Guns that already have bodies on them, which makes it basically impossible to connect it to a specific person. The reason why Lil B's name got involved in the rumors is because his brother liked to comment that it was actually Lil B who murdered Baldi. This was in that case Lil B's first body, however, I do not believe he did it. I have now explained both theories to you, you get to choose which theory you believe in. Then, of course, there is the theory that it was both STL slash EBT and mob that was behind the murder, just like at the murder of OD. It's probably the theory I lean towards, that it was main main from STL and scrap from mob, either the theory or that it was only mob, scrap and Mano. I do not think Lil B was involved. As I said, you get to choose which theory you want to believe in, I do not say that one or the other is true but only present both theories. The vast majority say that Mob invented Baldi World, even 600 themselves, although some said that they are dials for Baldi World, which points to STL. Jakiro also tweeted that we made Baldi World, but as I said, STL and especially Jakiro were quite notorious for claiming others' work. The stretchers is just walking out the door. Yeah, y'all know they're a die L. Die L, man. Man, we, man, we young man, money, man. Crazy. We in the store, man. You know, we getting that. But I saw him try to blow a nigga here out. One thing I must make clear to you before I start rambling up all of Lil B's bodies, is that he was an absolute monster on the street. He was at the same level as other known savages like D-Roy, King Von, Melly, Cide and such. He was in this to win and did not like people who did not have the same mentality as him. That's why he did not hang out with most of the STL members, since he felt they were not in this as much as himself. He felt that they only sat on social media and claimed things he was behind. He even shot King Cole from STL in the leg for sneak dissing him in the summer of 2013. A lot of people from STL were really scared of Lil B. The people he mostly hung out with from STL were Duck. Lil J, Jakira, Butta, Dutchy, Bostral and Wooski. Other than that, he mostly hung out with older guys from EBT and actually did most of his dirt together with Jara members. Lil B was really out in the field, without fear, allegedly catching multiple people and shooting a dozen of people. He was a real hothead and I'm not surprised he was eventually killed by a police officer. He was always out in traffic, hunting, or in apartments, that way he was very difficult to catch. It was the same with King Von, 
and that's why their paths never seem to cross. BG from EBT even said it himself, Dihei were very similar in that way and both were killed by people who had nothing to do with the war, Lil B by the police and King Bun in another state. Lil B was literally sliding on everybody and there is evidence for everything. We're talking about a guy who has been mentioned as an offender in 32 different case reports. He was sliding on a block, 300, 600, his old gang, DYMB, 400 East Murda Drive, Chris World and Trap City. He was a big problem for every single set I just mentioned. In the year 2011, Lil B is rumored to have caught four bodies, and then I do not include the rumor that he was involved in the murder of Baldi, which I do not believe. Right, man, so we was hungry and shit, we was smoking and shit, we hungry. We say fuck it man, everybody's like man we finna go and march the sharks on 63rd. So we march the sharks and shit, everybody order and shit, out of nowhere. Lil B pop up in that bitch. He shake up with me. We show 16. What's up, folk? Ooh, ooh, shit. He walk over to Brody L's, who y'all know as Jael. He walk over there to him. He like, man, bro. Motherfuckers, my bitch told me you would sneak this to him while I was locked up. Jael folded like laundry mat. The nigga say, no, nah, you ain't talking about me. You talking about cold. So Lil B, Lil B was like, all right, all right then, long as you, long as you say you ain't do it, all right. He walked out of that bitch, marched to Everhart, Cole them right there, everybody dice game, everybody out there. He walked up to Cole, asked Cole the same shit. Cole tell his ass, Cole was like, man, don't approach me about no bitch, man, get the fuck on. Some shit like that, some goofy, some shit like that. He ain't called no goof, but he was like, man, you better get the fuck on with that shit. Look, he took out Ratchet. <laughs> it's already cocked back. BOW! Leg shot, crowd disperse. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like a lot that get down and never hurt a real killer because a real killer know how to move. You feel me? A real killer just not finna be out here loose as hell like a lot of these nobody. You know what I'm saying? A lot of then got checked out and man was really like a lot of them was nobodies. I'm gonna speak for Tuberville. A lot of they was man they was nobody they was kids that was just out here loose as hell and the hood had what it had going on and they was getting a little coat straight up just like if Lil B was was alive when Vaughn was doing his thing you see what I'm saying it's like I mean they never ran across each other because it's like you not finna catch no real killer cuz a real killer got the same mindset you got you know what I'm saying so it's like it's gonna be hard to get up with it. That's gonna be some type of back door or something. You gotta send a b to something with him or his man's take a sack on him or some type of hit when it comes to real killers getting checked out. My mama, killers and killers stink alike, man. You not finna just be out here standing on no motherfucking block and you out here getting busy, getting really wild. My really gotta work for that body, man. Now we have come to Lil B's first alleged body, and there is evidence of this since his name has been mentioned in the murder report. On September 26, 2011, Lil B allegedly caught his first body. According to witnesses to the murder, a verbal altercation took place between two groups of males. The victim, Jizzle, was in one of the groups and was wearing a white t-shirt. The witnesses then heard gunshots and observed the two groups shooting at each other. One witness described one of the offenders as a male with a black hoodie. Both groups of males then ran in unknown directions. The victim, Jizzle, whose real name was Carl Spencer, ran to 6031 South King Drive and collapsed on the sidewalk. He had been shot in the left side of the head, right shoulder, abdomen and lower torso. 
Jizla was quickly transported to Stroger Hospital where he was sadly pronounced dead. Police said they found several 45 caliber spent shell casings on the sidewalk as well as several 9mm spent shell casings on the parkway and street. According to the police report on the murder of Jizil, his mother was interviewed and told that almost immediately after the murder the word was out on the street that Rayson, Lil B, Shaw had killed her son together with Tutu, and that they had left the city immediately after the murder in fear of that any witness would talk to the police. She said that she had always heard through all these years that it was Lil B and Tutu who murdered her son, and that she later learned that Tutu had been killed only two months after Jizzle, and that Lil B had been shot dead by police in March 2014. The victim, Jizzle, who was a member of Squirt Town, which is basically the same as Brick City and 600, was a very respected and loved member. The report also showed that he was known to have two bodies to his name. The ironic thing is that Jizzle was a GD from a BD set, and his killer was a BD from a GD set. Just goes to show how little the nations mean. On December 22, 2017, Skinny from Jaro City, whose real name was Kayan Vance, was arrested and charged with aggravated battery with a firearm after shooting a 28-year-old man and a 14-year-old boy in the school bus. Neither of the wounded were intended targets. However, Skinny faced a long sentence and to get out of it all, Skinny said in an interview with a detective that he had information about a murder in 2011 and that he was a witness and that he was willing to cooperate. In the interview, Skinny related that he was walking with Lil B, Tutu, Lil Daryl and Ja Ja, all members of Jaro City, except Lil B. Skinny stated that they were walking in the area of 61st and King Drive, they intended to walk towards a store located in that area, however on the way, they spotted CJ, also known as Jizzle, a member of the 600 faction of Squirt City, a rival street gang. He said he knew CJ to have the name of Carl Spencer. Skinny then related that both Lil B and Tutu were armed, and when they spotted Jizzle, they ran in his direction. Jizzle immediately turned to run but Lil B and Tutu started shooting at him. Jizzle, who had just exited a building, ran northbound on Vernon followed by Lil B and Tutu. Skinny stated that as Jizzle reached the corner of 60th Street, he appeared to fall. He said that Lil B and Tutu continued to shoot and as Jizzle was laying on the sidewalk, both walked up to him and took turns shooting him, they were almost standing over him, Skinny said. Skinny later identified both Lil B and Tutu and photos for the detectives in the interview. Skinny was later released from jail in 2020. According to Fei Fei from TYMB and BG from EBT, this was not the first time Skinny did this but also did the same in 2012, giving a statement about the murder of Jizzle. However, I do not know if this is true, if it were true, Lil B would have been arrested. Lil Daryl, whose name Skinny mentioned in the interview, was also taken in for an interview and basically told the same story, probably to avoid being arrested himself for the murder. Nor were these the only murders they spoke of. They also spoke of the murder of both Sherwood and Patoon from O Block that we come to a little later in history. What was very interesting in this report as well, which by the way was over 200 pages, 
was that the same pistols that were used in the murder of Jizzle were also used in a double murder attempt on a block just five days earlier. My theory is that Tutu and Lil B were really looking to catch a body, but that they failed that time. They shot a man by the name of Tyrone, and a woman by the name of Antoinette. I have no idea who they are and were probably innocent bystanders. The report also mentioned that the 45 caliber pistol that was used in the murder of Jizzle, was also used in the murder of Sheroid that we will come to a little later. In addition, the 9mm gun 22 used in the murder of Jizzle, was also used in a shooting on November 19, 2011, nine days after Tutu was killed, meaning he must have given away his gun before he was killed. This just goes to show how much these guns get passed around, because the 45 caliber gun was allegedly later put in the hands of Bostrell when he killed Sheroid. Who was behind the shooting on November 19th is basically impossible to know. It may have been Lil B since I highly suspect that he owned both of the guns used in the murder of Jizzle. These documents really show how ruthless Lil B was in the streets. Two attempts and one murder in just a couple of days in September, 2011. After these events, he just continued. In October 2011, Lil B allegedly added two bodies to his count, making it three. Now we have come to Lil B's second body. On October 6, 2011, Rio from Trap City slash Zone 7 was walking near the corner of 67th Street and Langley Avenue when a dark-colored 1999 Oldsmobile Cutlass drove by. According to rumors, Drizzy, Soicy and Lil B were in the car, Drizzy behind the wheel. At the same time as they drove past Rio, it is rumored that Lil B stretched his arm out of the window and shot Rio multiple times in the chest and arm. As soon as he hit the ground, the car sped away from the scene and managed to get away. Rio, only 17, whose real name was Ray Gibson, was found unresponsive on the sidewalk and was taken to the hospital where he was later pronounced dead. Rio seems to have been a beloved member from Trap City slash Zone 7. A lot of members from Trap City and Zone 7 have mentioned his name in several tweets after his death. To my knowledge, there was no direct personal reason why Lil B killed Rio other than that Trap City slash Zone 7 are enemies of STL slash EBT. Both Bostrell and Lil B slid on Zone 7, Chris World and Trap City a lot. Bostrell allegedly killed Ja One from Chris World for example. My theory is that Lil B, Drizzy and Swicey just were out casually sliding, looking to score on an enemy block and just happened to spot Rio. It is actually the most common motive for murder, usually it is not personal reasons behind, just senseless killing. However, Lil B did not stop here, only 12 days later he would caught his third body. On October 18, 2011, Lil B caught his third body, this time, his first, but not last, body on a block. According to Jay Hood from a block, he and a few other members were out on the block, in the middle of Parkway Gardens, 64th Street and Martin Luther King. 
Jay Hood stated in a YouTube video that he was out with Oogie, D Slick, Boss Money and Patoon, and at the same time as Jay Hood was going up a flight of stairs he started hearing shots, he ran up the stairs to check from the window and saw two men shooting at the people outside. Two members were shot in this incident, Ugai, 15, from Oblock and Patoon, 20, from Oblock and according to Jay Hood, he witnessed when the shooter stood over Ugi, shooting him. According to the police report, Ugi was hit in the jaw, ear and left hand. As soon as the offenders bailed out from the scene, Jay Hood ran to Ugi to see if he was alive and it was him. Jay Hood then tried to get hold of his loved ones for help, and that was when he stumbled over another body, Patoon lying dead on the ground. According to the police report, Patoon was shot multiple times, hitting him in the head, both arms, hip, wrist and chest. According to a news article, Patoon was out walking with his girlfriend near 63rd Street and King Drive when two suspects wearing dark clothing approached and shot the man. Shortly thereafter, the suspects went further down the block and shot the 15-year-old boy, Oogie. Patoon was tragically later pronounced dead at Stroger Hospital. Fortunately, Oogie miraculously survived after receiving treatment at Cummer Children's Hospital at the University of Chicago. Y'all niggas know about when Toon got killed. I was out there on the block when Toon got killed. It was only probably like four, five of us. And a crazy story on, man, obviously I ain't finna be on here doing all that extra shit if this shit ain't legit. Hopefully y'all get that. But look, we on a, um, it's cold ass day. Me, Oogie, I don't know if y'all know about Oogie and shit. He on the block and shit. Definitely free slick. Definitely one of my boys. I, I fuck with slick, but we on the block anyway. We walk the bam. We sitting under this little portion. I'ma cut the story short because you know I've been talking for a minute. Wait, what do you say? What? What about Duck? I know you're an athlete. Duck's a big boy. I know he used to be a heavy. Hey, bro. The bigger they are, the hot. Like the bigger they are, the hard, harder niggas be falling for real. Yeah, I was out there with Oogie. He almost died. I was. Bro, crazy, I, so I can finish my fucking story, bro. Y'all can't send me too many places, bro. Like, I'm, then I got ADHD, bad as hell. Like, I get to talking about a whole bunch of shit that ain't got nothing to do with this. But listen, anyway, so Oogie get to walk to the other end. He hood. Come on, bro, we finna go to my end. I'm like, all right, I get to walking. Somebody called me, this lady that, um, I knew her daughter. I went to school with her daughter. Y'all know Boss Money. Boss Money was out there too that they tuned him and Oogie and them got shot. So she called me, she, uh, she, she, she mall, come upstairs real quick. So anyway, I'm running upstairs, bro. I, no bullshit on my granny, I'm running upstairs. All I hear, boom, 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 boom. Nigga, I fly up the stairs so I could look out the window to see what the fuck was going on. I look out the window, bro, I bullshit you out on my homies. And bro, man, don't, bro, like me merchanting and then putting on my homie on BD, bro, I don't game bang. I literally, just, I've been in the trenches for so long, bro. Like some of this shit is just stuck in my mental like i can't not talk this way type shit but anyway bro i look out the window i literally see two niggas over oogie on old grave i see two niggas over oogie bro i'm talking about standing over him i just know they kill bro i know they kill so they pell up they bell out oogie literally running the hallway so i run downstairs I run in the um, I run in the hallway so I can see what's bro all right and shit. I'm like, damn, bro, I'm about to go get your people's number. I'm about to go get your people's number. So why I'm running, right? I'm running to go get Oogie and them people's, and guess who I stumble upon laying on the ground? Toon. Toon, right there dead. I seen Toon right there dead when I was literally trying to go, you feel me, and make it to um, make it to tell folks, people that he had got shot, man. And what's crazy is, bro, it was two of them. What, you know what, what scared me is like, I was literally, bro, walking right with the nigga. I was about to walk right with the nigga, bro. I got a call from God. She might have didn't know it, but shit was crazy, bro. On oh, my mama, that shit was so crazy, bro. 
it was so crazy. I'm seeing like I like seeing bullets stuck in a motherfucking head. A fuck you up. I saw them bullets lodged into. Man, you I love me some fucking platoon, bro. I love me some fucking platoon, bro. It was crazy because Toon came outside trying to see where the shots was going on. You know some shots going on the block. That gotta be us, right? Man, that was one of the first times them niggas was on our block actually trying to do that, bro. And it was a scary, scary, scary sight. Cause on I, I bullshit you not. And the only reason why I even got into this story um, is cause right after Toon died, Fredo was out there. You know, the niggas knew about it and shit. And Fred, Fredo was out there and shit. And me and Fredo, literally, it was just me and Fredo on oh God. Rest in peace to Fredo. We just walking around the block, bro, just talking about a lot of shit, bro. That was the last time I seen Fredo. For real. He said, BJ love him some fun, bro. Now we come back to the earlier police report, the one about the murder of Jizzle. In that report, Skinny and Lil Daryl provided information not only about the murder of Jizzle, but also about the murder of Patoon. In a written document, Lil Daryl stated that Race and Lil B. Shaw shot and killed Patoon from a block. In the police report on the murder of Patoon, whose real name was Edward Riley, Lil B was also mentioned as the main suspect for the murder and the shooting of Ogie. Both the statement from Lil Daryl and the murder report basically confirms that Lil B was one of the offenders, however, when it comes to the other offender, it is more uncertain. However, in August 2020, the case was closed by the police and according to a family member to Patoon, the police said they knew who killed her cousin, that one of the offenders was shot dead by police in 2014. Lil B, and that the other offender is in custody for another murder that took place in October 2013. The murder that the police are referring to is when Beans from Mob and one other guy from Geodrive slash SKD killed someone during a robbery. This means that the other offender in the killing of Patoon is most likely Beans from Mob, also known as Buka, who was also involved in the murder of OD from a block just months earlier. Prince Dre also once tweeted RIP Patoon, F Mob which indicates that Mob was involved in the murder. Even King Bun once tweeted about Mob's involvement in the murder of Patoon when he tweeted, I'm in school with Mob, EBTK, and RIPOD and Patoon hoodie on. Another interesting detail of the police report is that one of the 9mm guns that was used in the murder of Patoon was also used in four other shootings where Lil B possibly was the offender. It's crazy how much Lil B was involved in and much of it is documented so no one can say it is not true. As many of you already know, Patoon was a beloved member of a block. He has been mentioned in several songs by King Von, Boss Top and Chief Keef. For example, the song Where I'm From by King Von from his new album, What It Means To Be King, was largely about JR, also known as Patoon. In the song, King Von mentions Patoon as one of the leaders in Wick City and that he and Jay Money were inside when he was murdered. Both J Money and King Bun took revenge when they were released in 2012. Both of them caught several bodies that you can learn about in the story of King Von. However, one of them was later killed by the main person in the story which we will come to a little later. Patoon himself was a documented gang member according to police. He had 26 arrests dating back to 2009, including a conviction for possessing a handgun with a defaced serial number according to court records. After the murder of Patoon occurred, police said crowds of people flooded in the area outside the building. Police were called in to disperse the crowd after people reportedly tried to climb onto an ambulance for unknown reasons. O'Block later adopted the nickname Toontown to honor his memory. Lil B continued to put in work for the rest of the year. Later in November, he shot up DYMB in the next month, he would allegedly take another life from this planet.
That's crazy. Yeah. Fuck that bitch ass. Hey man, get that King Louis side. King Louis, man. Fuck, Fuck that man. bitch ass nigga. Lil Ross side, he came through blowing. He ain't hit shit. The man was shooting that straight. Nothing but buildings. Nothing but buildings. Fold them. Yeah. Fold them. Yeah. 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 Can't yeah, know what to do, man. Some beat. blind, some terminated. Ain't hit shit. Hey, this time we gonna have one of them, yeah. Killing his ass. <laughs> hey, we gonna train their ass up in the park and let them stay there for years. Fuck that, we drilling. Damn, man. They got Fuck the ops, man. Two, two, three, two, five, look, hey, Damn. Hey, look, hold on. Damn. This all I know, G. I can't even see your black ass. Yeah. Why, Sean, I heard you got fucking hard <laughs> grow, bitch. Ah. <laughs> Ooh, he got fucked the hard bro, I believe it. I, I, I. Look, we, we rolling on the fire. Shout out to E Day, man. Some doc told me you got fucked the hard roll up, bitch. You fat ass. Fuck EBT, bitch, we fight. Shut up, break, break. They some bitch ass niggas, white tail. Just two months after the murder of Badoon, Lil B caught his fourth and final body of the year. It's really insane how much work Lil B put in the year 2011. Four bodies in just a couple of moths, multiple shootings and attempted murders, only at 17 years of age. Anyways, on December 17, 2011, King Lil J and Lil B was out in the 6300 block of South Ellis Avenue about 4.30 a.m. Allegedly, they were out on a robbing spree that day, they had according to rumors robbed multiple people earlier this day. However it would soon go south. A witness stated to the police that the victim along with three other friends were at Francis Lounge located at 307 East 75th Street having some drinks. However, they later left the place in a Ford Explorer, all heavily affected by alcohol, except the driver, Levon. They drove to said street, 6424 South Ellis. At the location, an unknown man in a black hoodie approached the car and demanded money and personal property. One of the males in the car gave away his watch to the offender in fear of his safety. At that moment, Levon attempted to drive away from the scene but the alleged offender, Lil B, fired shots into the car, striking Levon in the head. Lil B and King Lil J fled the scene after firing the shots and Levon, 30, whose real name was Levon Elston was sadly pronounced dead on the scene according to paramedics. Why Lil B and King Lil J targeted Levon and his friends is unknown, they are not into it with STL slash EBT like that. My theory is that Lil B and King Lil J may also have been at the same club as them and that something might have gone down between them, and that Lil B and Lil J later followed them. It's the only motive I can think of other than it could have been completely random, In February 2012, it was time again when C. Murda's brother Sheroid from a block was murdered. The same gun used in this murder was also used in the murder of Jizzle. Many even say that it was Lil B who killed Sheroid, however, that is false. We all know who it was, the one who asked if O'Block remembered that red beam. I'm talking of course about Boss Trail from STL. Lil B may still have been there. The report says there were two offenders in the murder, however, my guess is that the other was Skinny from Jaro City. The reason why I think Skinny was present is because he himself mentioned that he witnessed Boss Trail shoot Sheroid through a gap in a wooden gate. This was told by Skinny in the murder report of Jizzle, which confirms that Boss Trail murdered Sheroid. Shortly after the murder, in early 2012, Lil B was arrested and charged with unlawful use of a weapon along with possession of a stolen vehicle and was locked up for a few months. He was later released in the summer of 2012. Just as I mentioned in the introduction of this video, Lil B was listed as the offender in over 30 police investigations, ranging from stolen vehicles, pointing a gun at a witness, shootings, attempted murders and whatnot. In the report, 
the police mention that Lilby pointed a silver revolver at a girl after a heated discussion after she threatened to call the police. According to police, Lilby is said to have said, you really want to do this? The girl luckily managed to escape the situation. This incident occurred 1st March 2014. In December 2013, he was arrested along with Side from Jaro City for carjacking. In November 2012, Lil B shot up O Block twice, both November 19th and November 28th. However, just as I mentioned earlier, Lil B was later released in the summer of 2012 after being charged with unlawful use of the weapon. It did not take long for Lil B to get on it again after being released from jail. In August, one month after being released, Lil B would strike again. Now we have come to Lil B's fifth body, this time, he would score on Chris World slash Zone 7 slash Trap City again by allegedly killing Johnny, also known as Scooter, from Zone 7, the same gang as Rio came from, who Lil B allegedly killed in 2011. Scooter, only 19 years old, whose real name was Johnny Howell, was on his way home together with his 23-year-old friend from a neighborhood in the 600 block of East 67th Street when a vehicle pulled up to them and opened fire. Scooter was hit multiple times and was taken to Northwestern Memorial Hospital where he was sadly pronounced dead. However, if Lil B was really the one who killed Scooter is uncertain, there are several rumors that it was TYMB who got Scooter due to the murder of Obama from TYMB. There are even tweets where friends of Scooter write, RIP Scooter, 065K or YMK, indicating that DYMB did it. The names from TYMB that have been rumored are Money Man, Face and Roro. I can already tell you that Lil B allegedly had six bodies, or seven if you believe the Baldy theory, six of them I have already told about and here I must be clear, only two of them are confirmed by police reports, Jizzle and Patoon. Baldi, Rio, Scuda and Levon are unconfirmed. The seventh, J Money from a Block, which we will be coming to soon, is also confirmed by the police. This means he has three confirmed bodies that we know of and four unconfirmed where you viewers can choose whether you want to believe it or not. Anyway, back to Scuda, when I look through the Twitter feed after his death I get a picture that he was a very beloved member, and I also get a feeling that he put in work. There are pictures of him with guns, and Zone 7 slash Trap City adopted the nickname Scooter Block to honor his memory. In late 2012, shortly after allegedly killing Scooter, Lil B shot up O Block and was arrested a few days later for parole violation, however it wasn't related to the shooting. He was observed in an alley of 6430 South Eberhard along with six other people, when Lil B saw the cops looking in his direction, he immediately started running and tried to flee the scene, however he was detained shortly after by the police. In August 2013, he got arrested for trespass, he had a lot of those charges on his record, most of the members do. However, before we get to the year 2013, 
I must of course mention the murder of P5, also known as King Crack, the murder that would later lead to the murder of J Money from a block. On October 30th, 2012, P5 agreed to meet up with the person he thought came to buy drugs at 9.13 a.m., at least that is the rumor. His incident report said he was on his way to buy coffee in the morning. Anyway, instead of meeting up with a customer, he was greeted with an ugly surprise. The people he saw were allegedly King Von, J Money, Big A, L.A. Capone and Manny from 600. As soon as he saw them he started running but unfortunately, J Money caught up with him and shot him in his back. P5 fell to the ground but the OB 600 members did not stop there. They all stood over him and shot him six times in his face and nine times in his body. After they were done they pretty much left P5 on the ground, without a face and nine holes in his body, and when paramedics and police arrived at the crime scene they had a hard time identifying the body, it was that ugly. Derek was taken to John H. Stroger Jr. Hospital of Cook County, where he was pronounced dead. Just like I mentioned earlier in the video, Lil B mostly hung out with members from Jaro City and did most of his dirt together with them. He was very close with P5, even though he had a shootout with his brother Panky when Lil B claimed TYMB. A little less than a year later, in September 2013, Lil B would take revenge on a block three days before P5's birthday. If you like, like you, your relationship with him, like your friendship with him, just yeah, me and Melly, we, we like this. This is my boy. Like, yeah, I love Melly. That's my homie. Uh, and uh, shit. Um, they want to know if you do a feature with Model, P5, Malcolm. You know them? Nah. All right, never mind. There, we already. He already told us about Tuka. He said Tuka, one of his favorites to work with. Right, they yeah. want to know about the Gleesh Place video. Oh, Gleesh Place coming soon. And I do a piece with all of them niggas. Tell them just send them money. Yeah, we need that bag. 100 oh, racks. Bag. 100 racks of feet. Oh, I don't think they got it. <laughs> My boy charging 100 racks. I don't give me stars for this bitch. I be chicken. Y'all don't know me. Y'all don't know me. I be chicken on this bitch. <laughs> Say the names who want to do the features again. Uh. He'd have to scroll up. I can't even see hey, that shit. Hey, y'all, listen to the name she said. Want to do the feature? We'll we'll get a clip of it. And we'll we'll send it to you. Um, All right, send the name. Listen to the name. Say want to do a feature. Um, they want to know if you'd ever do a song with Young and Ace, Jada Youngin, or and K. I don't know who that K. Or no, say the other name she said. You gotta scroll up so I can read that. Can you do that for me? Hold on. It was. Now scroll up a little more, a little more. 
If you do a feature with Modell, Tyreek, P5, or Malcolm. Build a fuck. Look out, folks. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> And that's just that's a no, right? I'm assuming that's a no. <laughs> hey, post the top. Fuck you, some police shit. <laughs> I don't even. Who are those? I, I don't, am I supposed to know who they are? Man, them people is dead. You bogus. Now I'm just left. What's up? Let's go to the next question. No, that's crazy. They have me violated like that. Dead. Hey, you with that shit? Fuck sixty third. Now I'm just left. <laughs> they have me violated. On September 2nd, 2013, Lilby would catch his sixth and last body, and to quote Lil Tuan from Taekwon World, he would give P5 the best birthday gift. Of course, I'm talking about the murder of the outstanding member J Money from Oblock. It has long been speculated that J Money was set up by a girl when he was killed, and that KI was one of the killers along with Lil B. However, almost all of this is false except that Lil B was actually the killer. However some people like Mona from a block claim J Money was with a girl named Smokey when he was killed. However, this does not seem to be true, at least when looking through police documents. Much of the information in the report is redacted in black to protect witnesses and other valuable information. In the report, it was mentioned that J Money was together with Prince Trey and E-Dog when they drove to the 6600 block of South Roads Avenue to do laundry. At the same time, Lil B was with at least one other person in the car. The driver, who is unknown, drove up next to J Money's car in traffic and Lil B was hiding in the car to then peek to get a glimpse to see if it really was J Money in the car. They then followed J Money's car and the driver dropped off Lil B on 66th and Rhodes where Lil B went behind a house, went through a gangway, and started blowing with his 9mm Luger at J Money who was loading his laundry in his car with a dog while Prince Dre was in the car. As soon as the shots started to pop off J Money started running, Lil B ran after him, shooting in his direction. Sadly, J Money got it in the lower body and fell to the ground, he got up and tried to flee into an alley, but Lil B was still on his heels, he continued blasting at J Money and now he hit more serious shots on J Money. He was hit in the chest several times, one of which went out of his mouth, and one that hit J Money right in the forehead. The whole thing about J Money was stood over and was shot four times in the grill, as Wooski stated in his song Computers, is completely false and probably only meant as a mockery.
J Money, 21, whose real name was Jerome Wood, was sadly pronounced dead on the scene once the paramedics arrived. What is also mentioned in the documents is that once the shots started ringing in the air, Edug allegedly jumped in the driver's seat and drove off from the scene together with Prince Trey. However, the names Prince Trey and Edug are not mentioned, the identifications are puzzled together by date of birth. Descriptions along with the fact that Prince Dre said in a song that he witnessed J Money die. The police report confirmed in several places that Rayson, Lil B, Shaw was the suspected sole shooter in the murder of J Money. The documents also reveal that King Lil J and FBG Butta provided information about the murder, and that they have heard that Lil B was the suspected killer. What is really revealing when you read all these documents is how many actually snitched to the police. There really are a lot snitches in all the gangs in Chicago, there is no gang where no one has snitched, I just wanted to make that clear. What is also revealing in the documents is that the same weapon used in the murder of Jay Money was used only a little less than two weeks in a shooting on Front Street where six members were arrested, one of them Lil B. This is really a common thread through all the documents about Lil B, he did not seem to have any problems keeping a dirty gun with bodies on it. Nearly all his guns that were used in murders could be linked to multiple shootings on different occasions. As most of you already know, J Money was one of the older and more respected members of Oblock. He had been in the game even before Wick City. He was allegedly involved in multiple murders and shot people like 50 Shot, Torrance, and Rel Rail from Jaro City, and Boomin from STL slash EBT. He was really putting in a lot of work and was one of Oblock's top members. After his death, Oblock adopted the nickname Money Gang, or OBMG to honor his memory. J Money is also the reason why several members today have Muna in their name, such as Muna Duke and Ocho Muna. A lot of people were after Lil B after the murder of J Money, he was close with gang like Lamron, THF 46, 600 and O Block, and all gangs were prepared Sly to in his name. Once King Von came out was Lil B on top of the list of people he wanted gone. However, they never managed to catch him. You see, Lil B moved very smart and was always on go and on alert. Just like with King Von, he was either out in traffic, lurking or in apartments, he was one step ahead all the time, which you have to be, if you are one step behind, there is always someone who is one step ahead and then it can be over in seconds. Lil B just went on and on terrorizing all the gang he was into it with, it is rumored that he shot D Rose in the stomach, Money Man from TYMB was about to smoke C-Day while riding around with Cray Cray, Lil J and Ju Blow from STL slash EBT. However C-Day's mom came out in the last second and said she would tell the police, and Lil B allegedly once ran up on Ocho Mana to kill him but while having the gun barrel to his head, the gun jabbed. Despite several attempts to pull the trigger, the gun did not go off, which is a big reason why Ocho is alive today. He really had got on his side that day. 
It is also rumored that Lil B used to hide in trash cans to pop up and start blasting on whoever he was after, in an attempt to end a life. Jesto, um, Lil J, and Lil B. We riding around all the blocks in the city and we ready to crash. I ain't gonna lie, we was ready to crash out with, with anything that was moving. We ended up on Front Street at Kale's Nim Crib. This no bullshit, we on 62nd. We right outside the building where E Day, them, all them outside, bro. We PC they on the back of the building, bro, on their thing. We about, to, we about to slam them out. They mama jump up like, y'all going to jail if y'all slam out. We just left it alone, bro. These real facts, real stories. Because I want to see that anyway. Because you know from the time when you did that shit on King God to me. So I was trying to get get back. But yeah, Long Lil Lil B. That was the last time I was with Lil J. Now me, him, Lil B, Creed. We was riding around the whole city, bro. We was in the F-150. This nigga was in the motherfucker. His little um, maximum or whatever the fuck I Lil J. had. Let's see. Something like that. But I heard like... Back in the day, I don't know, it was like 2013, 14, some shit like that. You you had a, a run in with somebody named Lil B or something, and some crazy yeah, shit happened. Some shit, some shit went down, man. It was like a shootout, like what? Man, what was it? It was on 63rd. It was me. One of my homies, one of my old homies, who was snitching on one of my homies and shit. We on 63rd, you know, we used to try to steal iPhone. We used to be fucked up, we tried to get out our hat. We all thought pulling a 24, we out there like 7 to 1. The motherfucker come with a fat, I mean, he had a dog. A motherfucker had a dog. I was like, who the fuck is this with the dog? We instantly, I got a glory boy sweat on. This one shit popping. I'm tweaking on his ass. We, um, where, where, where you from? Woo. He all do 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 do. Oh, woo, y'all know my, woo, y'all know my uncle, woo, from the O. Yeah, his name is such and such and shit. Ooh, that's my uncle, woo. Oh, all yeah, alright, you good, woo. So a motherfucker had got up out of that shit. As soon as I look look back, motherfucker come back with a with a fat ass hoodie on and shit. I'm like, man, what the fuck? You know, he acting like he on the phone. He uh um, woo. Y'all see my uncle? We like, no, no, motherfucker, you feel me? But we all just like standing like this. My homie right here, then I'm in the middle, then this other but that shit. And he on the phone. Oh, uh, long uh, long fucking long story short. This nigga pulled his pipe out and shot my homie in his jaw. Like, boom! But I guess he tried to shoot my homie in his head. Damn. So he shot my homie like, boom! My homie took off like, phew! Like he didn't even get shot. <laughs> if I'm lying down on my son's soul, the nigga up that bitch in my face on my son and the gun jammed. He, I'm just shit. I'm just <laughs> like shell shock. Oh God! He instantly hit the alley. Like. 63rd to 62nd, like in between out, he hit the alley. Uh, see where he finna go. See where he went. I ran to the back of uh, the school. My homie right there laying on the floor. Blood coming all out his motherfucking neck. You feel me? Out his neck. I don't think he got shot in the neck. Whole time folks got shot in the jaw. But hell yeah, that shit. Hell, that shit crazy, man. Then, yeah, they, then like once later, motherfucker got got uh, motherfucker got killed in school. Now the story is actually starting to come to an end. We are now in the year 2014. Basically everybody, including the police, were after Lil B. The police wanted to lock him up for good, and the enemies wanted him gone for good. On March 29th, his life ended for good after the police shot him dead. However, before we get to that event, there is one thing to tell. Just one week before he was shot dead, he was involved in a triple shooting in which three men from Taytown were shot. Lil B must have really had an incredibly good sight to hit three people, and this was before switches became common to use. Who the members actually were is unknown and fortunately all survived the shooting. It's really mind-blowing how much work Lil B actually put in, and for me who writes about, 
It is fascinating that he never bragged about his work on social media. That way you can compare him to No Limit Mad Max, who also put in a lot of work. Many members actually put in work just to brag about it later on social media to get credit and attention from girls and whatnot, but not Lil B. What is also interesting is that even though he has been mentioned as the suspect in three murder reports, as he was never charged with murder but only sat inside for minor crimes. He sat inside with people like D-Roy and Trey Five, and actually bumped heads with them in the county a lot of times. Trey Five and Lil B were like King Von and Wooski. They often got into it with and were top members from respective blocks, but they never caught each other. Trey Five and T-Roy were Lil B's main targets in the street. Lil B also got into it with DYMB members in the county, Diondi for example. Another interesting rumor is that Lil B apparently never sold drugs a day in his life, he was all about shooting and killing. On March 29, 2014, Grayson, Lil B, Shaw, was shot and killed by police. According to police, this shooting was justified. They say Shaw was seen participating in a suspected drug transaction. When officers confronted him, he fled the scene. Police claim they cornered him in the gangway between two buildings when Shaw drew a .40 caliber Glock handgun with an extended magazine and laser sight attachment, and pointed it at the officers who then opened fire. Lil B was struck with bullets all over the body and collapsed in the gangway in the 6200 block of South Rhodes Avenue in the Woodlawn neighborhood. According to police, Lil B was holding a handgun in his right hand and pointing it at the officer, refusing to drop the weapon after being ordered by a plainclothes officer, according to police. After the men refused to drop the weapon, the officer fired after being in fear for his safety and life, according to the police statement. Tragically, Lil B was pronounced dead at the scene. The police pulled a gun like he was going to shoot him too, telling him to back up, said Veronique, the victim's cousin. He was just laying there. He did not have any weapon or anything. He was just trying to hop a gate. He never posed a threat or anything, said friend Jay. He had a warrant of his arrest that he knew of, so maybe that's why he took off running. The incident drew a large crowd of people into the streets, a lot of them angry at what they viewed as an unprovoked shooting, openly confronting police. At least three people were led away in handcuffs. I got a call from my daughter. She was screaming and hollering. My son was going up to his cousin's house, and the next thing I know he's running through the alley and the police shot him said Sharon Shaw, the victim's mother. Among those who were drawn out by the shooting was Shaw's boss. She says the 20-year-old had a criminal history, but now worked for her, cleaning out foreclosed homes. He was a kid, said Shamika. He had a troubled past, but he was trying to get his life together. He had started working. Come to work every day on time. I had no complaints about him. Shaw was wanted on a warrant for missing a court appearance for a misdemeanor criminal trespass charge. As with all police-involved shootings, it is now the Independent Police Review Authority that is in charge of the investigation. The shooting was justified according to the police after reviews.
A deadly shootout in the middle of a Chicago street in the middle of the morning. A suspect allegedly pulls a gun on police who fired fatal shots. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Williams. My Martinez is off. It happened in the Woodlawn neighborhood. Police say they were chasing a suspected drug dealer. Let's go right to CBS 2. Suzanne Lemieux live from the police department's area central headquarters with more on this developing story. Suzanne? Jim, detectives here and the Independent Police Review Authority are now investigating the shooting. A massive police presence between Everhart and Rhodes on 63rd. Patrol cars, blue lights flashing after a police-involved shooting. He got shot seven times on Rhodes, right there by the police. Friends say 19-year-old Rasan Shaw had just left them to get something to eat. He was running through the alley with no gun or nothing, because he just left us, so we know he ain't had no gun. No police shot him unjustified. Too many times in his back, he ain't do nothing, man. Chicago Fraternal Order of Police Lodge 7 spokesperson Pat Camden says Shaw was caught by police in the middle of a drug deal. They went after him. Camden says Shaw pointed a gun at police. The officer defends himself, shoots the, shoots the offender, and he did recover a 40 caliber black with an extended clip. <laughs> Chaos erupts after the shooting. An angry mob gathers. The rumor starts to spread that he didn't have a gun. The police shot him for no reason. Nothing could be further from the truth. You're carrying a gun and you're stopped by the police. Put your hands up in the air and I guarantee you, you won't get shot. Point a gun at a policeman and I guarantee you, you will get shot. And that's what happened in this case. Absolutely. And police say that semi-automatic handgun recovered also had a laser sight on it. Live at Area Central, Suzanne Lemigno, CBS 2 News. Jim? Suzanne, thank you. Now the story of Rayson, Lil B, Shaw from EBT is over. It's one of the most interesting stories I've learned about. A young man who grew up in a tough and violent environment, just like many of the other members in Chicago. He was a member of TYMB who had a name already in 2007. He switched gang to the enemy side in 2009 due to snitch rumors which turned out to be fake, but he had already made up his mind. He was one of EBT's most active shooters, allegedly catching multiple bodies and shooting a dozen people. He was respected among all sets in the Woodlawn area, even members from 051 Young Money set up pictures of Lil B on the wall after his death. Over a hundred people protested and damn near started a riot towards the police after he was shot dead. Of course, he was also mocked by members from a block, DYMB, 600, THF 46 and Lanron. Both King Von and D-Rose mocked him for a lot of obvious reasons, Lil B took away a lot of their friends. On the whole, it is a very sad story. He took many lives from our world, destroyed several families, and later he lost his own life, and left his own family in grief and anger. Thank you for watching the video. Please like, subscribe and comment on what you thought of it. Rest in peace all who have lost their lives to gang violence.